Hello and welcome. I got into 3D printing so I could design and print buildings and accessories for my model railroad. So of course my first railroad project is printing a flat car in containers. Makes total sense, right? Oh well, that's the plan today. We'll get back to the buildings and accessories soon. I found two good models for today's project on Thingiverse. There's the flat car itself, designed by Jeff Jeffrey and the container model that was designed by Komeng1980. I'll leave the links in the description below in case you'd like to make your own. I'm doing this project as an experiment to see what's possible with 3D printing and end scale. I'll be printing this on my filament printer, a Prusa Mini Plus using Galaxy Silver Prusament PLA filament. In a later video, I will repeat the same process with my resin printer just for comparison. I brought the flat car model into Prusa Slicer to generate the G-code for the printer. The estimate was for it to take just over half an hour to print, and the actual print time was 36 minutes and 20 seconds. I've sped this video up so you can see the entire print. 3D printing is actually a slow process but I find it mesmerizing and relaxing to watch it in action. One of my favorite things about this printer is its flexible print bed, which makes it very easy to remove parts after it cools down. Okay, so now that I have the car body off the 3D printer, it's time to get this ready to ride the rails and to do that I'm going to be using the micro trains uh, roller bearing trucks and couplers they're pre-assembled they're molded in black plastic with black plastic axles and wheels and they have the short shank couplers so in these sets come with a variety of adapters and pins depending what brand car you're using them on in this case it's uh, my own brand <laughs> And it turns out that these bigger pins, um, when I say bigger, I mean larger diameter, work best. I'm going to use these. And then you get these sprues with smaller pin and an adapter and a spacer. I'm not going to need these, but I'm just showing it for comparison's sake. And then I just need some basic tools. Tweezers are always very helpful, especially when you're working with end scale and I'll just need a standard set of sprue cutters to get these off of the sprue. Alright, so I've cleaned up the stuff that I don't need just to keep my work area neat and you can see these will be the two attachment points for the trucks. Now 
And that's always the fun part when you're working with these little things is parts tend to go flying. Make sure you hang on to what you need. I'll find the rest of that sprue later. And now the rest is really quite easy. All I have to do is turn the car upside down, put one of those trucks into position. This is where the tweezers really come in handy to just get that set into place. And then all I have to do is press that in. And I repeat the same thing with the other set. Okay, and that one has a bigger hole, so it is not press fitting into place. Interesting. Okay, so the thing about model making of any kind is you always have to be able to improvise and figure out how to fix things when they don't work. In the interest of full disclosure, this is actually the second of these cars I made. I made the first one for my sister. I've already given it to her, and the pins on hers fit just fine. So what I'm going to do to fix mine, at least on a temporary basis, is I have this ancient, ancient pack of, uh, I call it fun tack. It's that clay-like stuff that you can use to put posters on the wall. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take just a super, super tiny piece of this and stick it inside the support. And that'll just give the pin something to stick to. If this were going to be a permanent installation, um, I would actually personally be very careful and glue it in with super glue. Of course, if you do that, you have to be really careful that uh, you don't keep the truck from rotating around the pin. But because this car is really something of an experiment for me, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it, if I'm going to paint it, if I'm going to repurpose these trucks for a different car. So... I am just going to take this little tiny wad of fun tack and stick it in there and and then attach the truck. Okay, and I know that was probably extremely hard to see on camera, but it worked. And you can see both of these trucks rotate freely. And they don't fall off when I turn it and let gravity do its thing. So, now that that's ready, let's give it a ride.
Okay, so I've gotten my containers off of the printer, and they look pretty good. There's a little bit of stringing again, not a big deal. I'll clean that up. The only issue, and I don't know why it's done this, is on one side of the container, just one side, these bottom rows didn't fill in completely. And I gotta imagine that's something going on with the slicer. It only happened on one side, but it happened on both containers. You can see here this side is fine, and this one's got these little gaps. What I could say is I believe the people who designed these files designed them for resin printers. And as I mentioned, I'm running this on a filament printer using PLA. But this is all just part of the experiment. I wanted to see how these things would work out. And in the coming days, I'm going to get my resin printer running. And I'm going to print this car again and these containers again in resin, mainly for a comparison purpose. Now the containers in the car were designed by separate people. They were not designed to work together. As I mentioned earlier, I had to print the containers at 95% of their size to get them to fit on the car. There's no way to affix them permanently other than to glue them, which I'm not going to do yet because I may want to use this as another test subject for painting. But temporarily I can just use this old fun tack to tack them down and then I can continue to play with it. Yeah, you can see that um, holds just enough to get it to stay put. Again, just a temporary solution. Okay, so here's the finished car with the containers temporarily attached. I mean, it looks pretty good. I know the detail's going to be a little crisper when I do it with resin, but that's going to be the point, is to see the comparison. But, you know, the fun thing is, this is a rail car I did not have when I woke up this morning, and now I can put that on my layout and run it. So I'm going to wrap up this video just with some comparison shots to this N-scale flat car with containers. I believe this was made in the 70s. Um, it's quite old. I got it secondhand as a kid. Maybe older than me. I don't know. I don't know when it was made. But it's a good comparison for how modern day 3D printing stacks up against it. And I think even from a filament printer like the Prusa Mini, I think this comes close. The main thing is I feel this 3D printed car should have been a little bit longer and a little bit wider. You can see from these shots the differences to the N-scale car from the 70s. And perhaps then I would not have had to shrink the containers. Uh, they're supposed to be 20 foot containers, printing them at 95% effectively brings them down to 19 foot containers. Of course visually it looks fine. But that's going to be all for creating this car and stay tuned for a future video where I will be doing this again on my resin printer. And as I promised, I'm going to wrap this video up just by playing a time lapse of these containers printing. The print time for them was just over an hour and a half, so even running this at 20 times speed, it's still going to take a couple of minutes. Don't feel you have to watch it, but I'm going to include it here just in case you're curious to see how it goes. And as these start to build up, you'll notice sort of a curvy, wavy pattern inside of the containers. That's called infill. 
I let my slicer run at the standard 15% infill. And what it does is it gives the containers rigidity so they don't, uh, if you squeeze them, they don't get crushed. But it also doesn't waste an excess amount of material. You can imagine if you made these solid, they would use up your filament pretty quickly. That said, it may be worth adjusting the infill if you want to get a little bit more weight in your end scale cars as the way they come off the printer I think they're a little bit too light and you may have problems with derailments because of it but that's something I'll explore later as I've said I mainly plan to print buildings and accessories but I did want to see how a rail car would work and I want to thank you for watching and I will leave you with the rest of the time lapse of the container print Thank you for watching, and I'll see you down the tracks.